I was shocked but not surprised to read at the weekend that the partners and spouses of people who receive the state contributory uh, pension are now being forensically audited and means tested by the Department of Social Protection. Now, in some cases, after uh, means testing, payments have been reduced or been stopped altogether. Now, the process in itself is really frightening for people. And if any of us here were demanded to lay bare all of our financial transactions, how would we feel? Are they not entitled to a level of privacy to live out their lives? Uh, I think it is totally wrong. So many of these you will have that are well below the means test, but they still have to go through all of the things would produce in their bank accounts, their statements and everything else. And I think there's something fundamentally wrong about it. Some people in receipt of pensions have been asked to keep receipts for up to four years in, the case of an, in case an audit is carried out in the future. Now, also there's people who are followed beyond the grave because you find that if, when people die, that again, revenue and the state bodies come looking for people to see, did they make a mistake? Did they count everything? And you have to remember that some people, you know, do not enjoy good health, so may have dementia or may have other things that don't allow them to be, um, to, to read and to communicate in the way that these departments might, might want them to. So the figure that they're talking about is that they've saved already is 15.7 million. And there's also a plan for how many assessments will be carried out in the future, that it'll be 6,500. Now there are elderly people across this state who are really worried, are they part of this 6,500? We also have to remember that a lot of these will be elderly women. They will be women that their spouses already get the contributory pension but then they're not entitled to any, any means uh, themselves. So this means that they have a figure in mind and that they know how much they want to recoup this year. And it amazes me how revenue and other state bodies, bodies can plan and execute with such accuracy in terms of the monies they want to recoup from elderly people who have contributed so much throughout their lives, whether that be through childcare, elder care, working outside or inside the home, or community uh, volunteers. They are forensic in how they go about it in terms of assessments and inspections. And then let us contrast that with the vast sums of taxpayers' money that we've seen, say, in the overrun of the National Children's Hospital and um, figures increasing by millions. Let us also contrast it to the thousands of people in, term in terms of people as well with chronic and lifelong illnesses. They are subject to regular assessment and constant examination again. And I just wonder where these departments are. Who has given the instruction to these departments to really antagonise these people? Now, I'm not saying that people should get something that they're not entitled to, but really the fear around all of this isn't right. And the state proves itself well able to account for every cent and indeed willing to take back monies in case of these uh, vulnerable individuals. But if only they had the semblance of the same vigilance that was present in the Department of Health and Finance, we mightn't be looking at so many projects that are delayed or scrapped to cover the overruns and the other things where millions is wasted. And I would really ask the government to have a look at this and maybe just even on specifically on the pensions leader to come into the House to have a debate on this, to look at the contrast between how the, the, the millionaires and the billionaires are treated in this country and then how ordinary citizens and elderly people are treated in terms of entitlements and taxation. Thank you.